So um, today we're going to talk about the parable of the plank, all right? So um, there's one person in particular that I was talking to this, this weekend, and they were like, that's not a parable. All right. Actually, I think he's even here, all right? Yeah, he's like, that's not a parable. That's like a group of like two sentences, but it, it is a parable. It is a parable, all right? It's like five verses. So what I want to do is I want to start off with, let's just read the parable together. I am a gym teacher, but I can read, I promise, okay? All right. Here it is. All right. So do not judge, or you too will be judged, for in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there's a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. All right, that's a lot of planks, a lot of eyes. All right, so, um, so I just want to talk about blind spots that we sometimes have a really hard time seeing in ourselves, but we're actually really good at pointing it out in others. Um, I think for me, this one was, I wish he didn't ask me to do this one because I'm actually terrible at this. So um, it, hits, it hits home for me because I struggle with this on, on multiple different levels. Um, I have no problem finding you know, specks in other people's eyes. I don't know about you, but um, I'm really good at it. And if you really want some help, I can always help you out with that too. So, um, it, and Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount, he's challenging us up front not to judge and to treat others with respect, compassion, and grace. To me, I think it's hard enough as is to t- treat someone with one of those things, let alone all three. So I think our critique should today should start inward, all right, not outward. Um, Honestly, I have a lot of stories um, where this is, a, this is a big issue for me. Um, I think one thing that we tend to do is we tend to take out our judgments on people that we love, all right? I think obviously we can take out our judgments on other people as well, but for me, that's one of my biggest struggles. And I think that um, I tend to take it out on my kids, right, Noel? No, she's not saying anything. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think kids can bring out the best of you and the worst of you. All right. I, I really believe that. I, I'm, when I'm judging kids, they literally, okay, they're annoying. Okay. They cost money. Okay. No, they, they do. They have, there's a lot of things that you're quickly, you know, that you're ungrateful. You don't pick up after yourself. All, all those kind of things. And then I'm sitting there and you know what I'm doing is I'm being reactionary. I'm being impatient, all right? I am being annoying. They tell me that as well. I'm being annoying. And and let's be honest, I probably gave them a lot of those traits, all right? So I have no one to blame but myself for a lot of those things. I think especially as a younger father, I was constantly trying to control everything out of a fear that they weren't going to turn out okay. And a lot of that came out as control, and it came out as anger. Um, it was part, partly insecurity as a husband and a father. Not until I was able to take the time to actually work on those things, all right, did I see a bigger impact in my kids. So through a lot of work, therapy, prayer, forgiveness, self-reflection, conversations, um, I was able to, to gain their trust. I was able to... to to be able to speak into their lives more freely because they were able to see that I was coming from a place of love and humility, not fear and control. So just so you know, and and they will tell you this, I'm I'm far from perfect. So they they have a little thing that they like to look at each other when this happens, but now they call me new dad, all right? I'm new dad, our dad 2.0, all right, I made that part up, but new dad. if I get into a funk or if I'm having a bad day, they like to look at each other and say, oh, there's old dad. So <laughs> I, I prefer not to have that happen quite as much. And, and obviously, I'm far from perfect, and I have a long way to go. Um, but I think we all can come up with some sort of examples, all right, from our own lives, whether it be from our spouse or our kids or people we know or even, even strangers. I think it, it um, really hits home with a lot of us in different ways. All right, so I just want to have a disclaimer here. First of all, when I was searching for different photos that deal with this or di- different random things, 
if you ever search like plank and eye, it's disgusting, all right? First of all, first of all, it looks weird. You have a plank coming out of someone's eye, all right? But this is, it is a good, I actually also thought of maybe I'll bring up a board and put, it just wasn't worth it, okay? So as you can see here, all right, it, it's pretty visual. This guy's got this huge plank in his eye and it's, it's hard for him to see anything, all right? So, I mean, that's, that's the visual that goes along with it. So what I wanna do is I wanna kind of start at the beginning of the verse, and I want us to kind of like go through it and explain the verse a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to hopefully give you some practical application points. And if you take away just one, I would be happy about that. So, um, so let's start with this first part. All right. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. So <clears throat> the word judge, it's a weird word because there's a lot of different things that go along with it. So when we, when I think about judging, I think of it as a negative thing mostly. All right. It does say obviously in the Bible that we can't, or that we can judge righteously, but he's talking about to discern between good and good and bad. And that's part of, you know, righteous judgment. But I don't think he's talking about that here, obviously. All right. I think in this case, he's talking about pass sentence on, to condemn, to criticize. This seems to be what he's talking about in this certain situation. The problem with that is when we condemn or criticize, we tend to make these sweeping statements about people, all right? We tend to try to judge their intentions and their heart, and we're really not equipped to do that. Now, we can judge actions, and we can, you know, use the Holy Spirit to guide us and, and you know, do that kind of thing. But a lot of time, I think our problem is, is that we judge heart conditions and motives and all that kind of thing when we're not equipped to do that. And we can't do it alone. And only God can really see people's hearts. And I think it's important that a lot of times when we're doing that kind of thing is that if we're going to do that, we need to invite God into that area. We need to invite the Holy Spirit to, to speak to us. All right, and most of that comes from us looking at ourselves first. So, obviously, the plank in our own eye represents our own sin and our own shortcomings and things that we deal with. Noelle's leaving, by the way. Bye, Noelle. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm a horrible father. That's old dad. Sorry, I got. I'm just kidding. That dad's never gonna die. That one. That one. Um, but, and then, obviously, back in other people's eye represents stuff that they're dealing with. It's not that we should ignore those issues per se, but we should approach them with humility and love. And we can't condemn them, but instead we must help them, all right, with that spirit of gentleness and kindness and humility, if and when they're ready to hear it. I think that's another important part. So this parable teaches us that we must not be, but instead we must be introspective and examine our own hearts first. I think that's a big issue is that a lot of times we don't examine what's in our own hearts and we just throw it out. And some of us, we don't wanna look inside our own hearts because there's a lot of things in there. So I think that's an important thing to do. I think also when we do that, we become aware of our own limitations. And it also helps us to become more compassionate when we're inside of our own hearts. I also just, I just want to put this out there. We, we're not meant to do this alone. It's not something that we should be doing on an island. It's not something that you should try to figure out just on your own. We're not meant to do that, all right? We're meant to ask God into those areas. We're meant to ask other people into those areas. So I think self-reflection, all right, gets a bad name, but I think it is important as long as you, as you take that into consideration when you're looking inward. Humility, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, when we're having interactions with others, those are, should be our go-to. They should. Um, I don't know about you, but have you ever noticed, you know, when you're judging someone and then you turn around and you look and you have that same problem yourself? All right. I, I know that I do quite a bit. I, I think this is something we also see all over social media. All right. And I'm not going to get into a teaching about social media, but... I think people, a lot of times, they're doing virtue signaling about the latest political or polarizing issue. Um, they're preaching tolerance and love, but at the same moment, they're judging and condemning people. And, and these things just don't match up. They, they, they don't. And I think 
I just want to be completely honest. I'm not any better. I don't post very much on social media. Like once in a while, like I don't know about you, some of you men, but like if my wife will post something, I might repost it. But like that's that's about the extent of it. Um, uh, even though I don't post, I'm sitting behind my computer screen. I'm judging you. <laughs> I, I'm just being honest. Like just because someone else posts, all right, that doesn't make me any better. If I'm doing the same thing, all right, and I'm not posting. It just means, you know, that I, I've got my own issues. <laughs> so I, I sometimes have found myself looking for faults in others so that I can deal with, you know, feeling better about myself, you know. And so I think a lot of that comes from in, insecurity. It comes from fear. It comes from pain. It comes from all those different things. And I, and I just want to put this out here. This doesn't mean that we can't have opinions. It doesn't mean that we can't stand up for things that, that are good and right. It just means we need to change how we say it and how we do it. I think that's the big thing. And, and side note, you know, I don't think social media is the best platform for those things anyways. I think authentic and honest conversations and discourse is the way to really make change happen um, in our relationships and in society. All right, soapbox over. All right, promise, that was it. No more about social media. So I kind of want to get again into some of those practical areas when we're dealing with um, the parable of the plank. So there's three things, obviously, um, not obviously, but there is going to be three things. Nothing that um, like some catchy saying or anything like that. But the first thing I want to talk about is um, reflection. Okay. Did I spell it right? Yes, I did. Come on. I use spell check and I asked Christine. So. <laughs> All right, so this part right here. Why do you look at the speck of, your, of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? The first thing that we need to do, all right, or at least the first thing I need to do is our, our check our blind spots and si spend some time in reflection, all right, and paying attention to what's going on. If we take the time to reflect on our own planks, we'll be better prepared for what God's called us to do. Reflecting is not always the easiest thing to do. I don't know about you, but I really struggle with it. Not only does it take time, but it also takes perspective and it takes self-awareness. This is where the blind spots come in. We are so focused on others around us that we have a hard time looking in the mirror at the things that we're dealing with. Part of that reflection should not only come from what the planks are in our eye, but how they got there. I think that's a big part of it. I know that part of the reason I condemn others is that I've already made a judgment about them, whether you know it's a judgment about who they are, or a judgment about what they did. And if I really took a step back and I looked at why I'm judging, I would have a much easier time seeing those blind spots in my own life. So what's kind of cool as, as Christians, okay, is that God gave us tools to be able to do these kind of things, all right? So what's really nice is that we have prayer, all right, and we have the Bible. And so in Romans 12, 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. That's so powerful, all right, that we have the tools right at our disposal. By renewing our minds, we gain the ability to discern God's will and live in a way that is pleasing to him. We become better equipped to make those decisions and act in a way that aligns with God's values and his purposes for us. We're able to see that the lies and judgment that lead to blind spots in our lives and instead pursue truth and holiness. I think, I think this verse is extremely powerful it's a good reminder we are called to live differently than the world. We're called to speak differently than the world. Um, it's just cool that God gives us all these things so that we can transform our lives in real positive ways. I think if we're taking the time to pay attention to what God is doing or saying through, the pr through prayer, through the Bible, and through others, it'll be much easier for us to work on our own planks and in turn help other people in their own struggles. 
So I, I want to put this caveat out there. I don't think this isn't an invitation to shame ourselves, all right? I just want to put that out there because a lot of times when we talk about judgment or we talk about these kind of things, we people take the time and just beat themselves up. That's not what this is about. This is, um, you know, we all fall short, all right? That's, that's a given, all right? At least I do. Um, this is an invitation to invite God into our thought processes, into our faults, into our sins, into our judgments. He isn't going to tear us down or tell us how bad we are. He's going to be loving and good, and he's going to help us see the truth. So, so that's the first one. The second one, which I think is one of the linchpins of this whole thing, all right, is walking it out in humility, all right? And I think for me, this might be one of the hard, harder ones, ones to do for me personally. So let's just read this real quick. How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. First of all, ouch. I mean, who wants to be called a hypocrite? I mean, not me. I mean, let's, let's be honest. I mean, it takes humility to be able to pull out the plank out of your eye, all right? Not only does it take humility, it takes vulnerability. And I have a hard time with both those things sometimes. Um, not only do I not want to humble myself, all right, I actually don't, sometimes don't want to put the work in to actually be able to change it. I think that's, there, there's a lot of things that go into that. I think the only way we can do this and pull those planks out is by approaching it with humility and vulnerability. Part of humility and vulnerability comes from letting gods and others have access to those areas. So we have to lay them down and we have to give them access. God says, or God said, come as you are, but he did not say stay as you are. I think that's hard to hear for us sometimes and it's hard for me because God is awesome and he meets us exactly where we're at, all right, but he wants more for us. It's not an easy thing to, to hear and um, we live in a culture that says you are great as you are and don't let anyone tell you any different. Okay, so bombshell. It's not true. Sorry. <laughs> if you have a problem with that, come talk to me afterwards. But the fact is, we are good enough with God, all right, because God is good, all right? God is going to help us walk through those things. God is going to meet us in those places, all right? So I think those, that's extremely important for us to remember, all right? And I think one of those, the first steps, as I've overemphasized this, is we need to, to humble ourselves to realize that we can't do it alone. So humility is freedom from arrogance and pride. So that's one thing we have to let go right away. So in Proverbs, it says, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. We are called to live from a place of humility. When we can honestly surrender to God and view our shortcomings from a place of humility, we will start to see clearly. And when we see clearly, God gives us the wisdom to be able to live out our lives in a way that not only is more healthy for ourselves, but it can be more healthy for people around us. Remember the example with my kids, all right? They hate it. No, they just joking. They didn't hate me. But it is. It just it gives you a better perspective, all right? It gives other people around you, all right, an opportunity to see things through a different perspective. I, I don't know about you. If you've ever been around someone that has really been judgmental, you can just feel it. You can just feel it. In the way, even if their intentions are really good, if their intentions are really good, like, hey, what they say is right on, but the energy behind it, they're not going to hear it. They're just not. Or you can ask, you know, people around me, like, I, I've had multiple conversations with Christine where, or even my kids, and honestly, I feel like what I'm saying is awesome, okay? <laughs> just saying, all right? And sometimes, obviously, I have a warped perception of myself, but... That's part of that self-awareness and reflection piece. But the fact of the matter is it's not necessarily always how you, or what you say. It's how you say it. 
all right, and the heart it comes from. So I think that's extremely important. Real humility will lead us to confession. I think that's something that a lot of times that, that we miss. So in James it says, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. All right, this one again, extremely challenging, okay? When we humble ourselves to take the time to share what's inside of us, it gives us the opportunity to heal and to see more clearly. And one way we can do that is to ask others to speak into our lives. Now, I'm not saying just go to, on the street and say, hey, speak into my life, all right? I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Find someone that loves you. Find someone that you trust, all right? Ask someone that is willing to tell you the truth even though it hurts. That's the key, all right? Ask them to tell you the truth. By paying attention to our own areas of weakness, we become more of our, our need for forgiveness and grace. We become more humble and more compassionate towards others. I think it's easy, easy, easy to ask people to speak into your lives if they're just going to tell you what you want to hear. Okay? I'm guilty of this all the time. We find people all right, that we want to feel good about ourselves. And that's normal. I'm not saying it's good, but I'm just saying that's human nature. All right, we find people that will speak into our lives, and then what happens is, is we continue hearing those things and justifying our sins and our judgments and all that kind of stuff, and then we start believing those lies. All right? And so I think that's, you know, something we're all guilty of. <sighs> but true growth starts with humility and the willingness to hear the truth that has been spoken in love. So if we can get to that spot where we're willing to hear that and willing to listen to those things, that's where the true growth happens. Okay. That's it. No, I'm just kidding. We're not done. We're getting close, though. All right, so last one. Truth. Hearing truth. All right, so we've talked about... Uh, reflection, we've talked about humility. So let's talk about hearing truth and telling truth. So we can't ignore this part of the verse. So it says, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. So I think this part gets forgotten a lot of times because we're just focusing on ourselves. All right, we're focusing on working through our things with God and through others and kind of stuff. And we forget that we do have an opportunity to speak into other people's lives if it's done properly. So besides paying attention to the plank in our own eye and dealing with that, there's a place for dealing with issues we do see in others, especially people that trust us. Once we are actively dealing with our own sins and weaknesses, we should be able to see more clearly. So when we're able to see more clearly, we're able to help more. <sighs> we see here that do not judge does not mean we shouldn't speak truth to others, but it matters how we speak and why we are speaking that specific thing. Jesus is described as being full of grace and truth. And sometimes we forget one or the other, all right? But they go together, all right? So there's verses about this, so we'll, we'll do this. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. Ephesians 4.15 encourages us to be honest with each other in a way that is characterized by love and grace and respects and reminds us that by doing so, we can grow and mature as a community of believers. Notice how it doesn't say, just speak love and you will grow. Growth comes from truth. Growth comes from grace, not from just one or the other. We can speak truth in a way that emulates God's love and grace. Pulling specks out of eyes isn't critical and condemning like we talked about at the beginning, but instead it's helping people see the truth of how good God is and in instead of honing in on how terrible someone else is. In Colossians it says, 
let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so you may know how to answer everyone. This one is challenging to me as well. <laughs> I think I've said that a lot. <clears throat> The phrase full of grace means that our conversation should be characterized by kindness, compassion, understanding. We should speak in a way that reflects the grace of God and the way he showed it to us. We're, call, we're called to call people up, not necessarily to call people out. So we want to call people up. And so when we're talking to them, when we're dealing with stuff that they're dealing with, all right, we want to concentrate on how God has called them up. All right, yes, we're supposed to be helping them, but it's not about calling someone out or catching them doing something wrong or anything like that. The phrase season with Saul obviously means our conversations should be engaging, they should be interesting, they should be relevant. Just like salt seasons our food, our conversations should be seasoned the same way. They should be seasoned with relevant information to the person. People don't want to be talked down to. They want to know that you're listening. They want to know that you're engaged. They want to be seen. If you do this, you'll have influence in their lives and be able to share how God has worked in your own life. So in summary, like I said, we have three things, reflection, humility, and truth and love. So to walk this parable out and to make sure we can see our blind spots, we have to be willing to look in the mirror at a reflection to see our own planks. We have to be humble and willing to admit that we have our own areas of sin and shortcomings. And be willing to, to allow God to do the work in us. And lastly, we have to be willing to speak a similar truth to others out of a place of love and humility. So I'm going to invite the, the worship team up real quick. So what's cool is, is we have a, a great opportunity um, here, you know, to be able to, to love each other and to be able to pray for each other. I, I really feel like God is calling us to humble ourselves today. He is asking us to lay down our areas of sin. He wants us to accept the gift of forgiveness that he has already paid for. Today, if you need help with any of these things, if you need help reflecting, if you need help being humble, if you need help speaking truth to others, let's get some prayer. We have some awesome people over there. It's not scary. We would love to pray for you. God does want us to be able to have an impact on others. But to do this, we need to be able to see clearly, to be able to speak clearly. We don't have to be perfect. We don't have to have it all together. And we don't have to have it all figured out. We just have to be willing to let God transform us. So what I want to do is I'm going to pray, and then they're, they're going to give us a couple more things. Um, so I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to let Brad talk for a minute. So, dear God, we just are so grateful for, for who you are. We're, we're just grateful that we have the opportunity to be with you, that you have given us the tools that we need to be able to live a life of humility, reflection, and truth. We just ask today that anyone that needs prayer would get prayer. We just thank you for this church. We thank you for this community. We thank you that you are bigger than all the areas in our lives, that you are bigger than our sin, you are bigger than our shortcomings, and we are so glad that you meet us exactly where we are. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm.